Okay, so we are recording now, and you and I are going to discuss old exams, right? And, and are we doing the study guides too, or just old exams? Uh, just old exams. Okay, so so this is sort of like a final exam review because we're you know half of the final exam is going to cover is going to be from the old exams. So let's take a look. And make sure I'm recording. All right, I'm recording. I am recording. Let me present the screen. And also, because you and I are discussing the exam, that means you will get, and we're recording it, that means you'll get a 10% boost to the grade um, just for a paper trail. And as a reminder, when we're done, just send me an email that says, hey, don't forget to give me the 10% boost. And then that way I can email you back when I have given you the 10% boost. Okay. All right, exam three. Here we go. So can you see it on your screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, do you want to just talk about the ones you missed, or do you have some that like you you were like I was guessing on that one? I just ended up getting it right. Um, let's talk about the ones I missed first, okay. and definitely that note card one. I want to know if I got that right because that one really messed me up. Oh yeah, the spider web one. Yeah, that okay. one. What? Is Assume the ability to shoot spider webs from your wrist is inherited as a sex-linked recessive trait. The gene is found on the X chromosome. All right. So before we move forward, the important thing you need to know here then is for a female to have it, they need to have it on both of the X. They need, you know, that recessive allele on both of their X chromosomes because it's a recessive um, trait. For a male to have it, since a male only has one X chromosome, they only need one recessive allele. All right. That being said, let's move forward. Can Spider-Man, a man who can do that, so that means... And I wish I could draw on this so it would make a lot more sense. Um, Spider-Man has that one X chromosome and has that one recessive allele. Um, can Spider-Man father a daughter who can also do that, assuming there is no such thing as mutation? All right. I wish I could draw a Punnett square. But, um, ooh, hold on now. Now I'm second-guessing this. This may be written wrong. Spider-Man, he can do this. So sex length recessive trait. Hmm. So for a ne I was thinking for a son, it's a negative. Like it's it would. Uh, and even uh, then it would be possible. See, I'm glad we did this because this is written wrong. I'm, this would be, let's see, if the daughter, if the woman he mates with. Oh, wait, no, that is right. So it is written correctly. Okay, that's what I thought it was after I got it wrong. But OK, explain that, though, please. OK, so. <laughs> You know, he's giving the only th if he has a daughter, that means he obviously that the daughter obviously got his X chromosome and not his Y chromosome. Right. So to have a daughter, you would need an X chromosome from him and an X chromosome from mom. OK. Right. Because you have to have two X's to be a female. So we know that if he has a daughter, that she definitely got his recessive allele because that's the only thing he has. Right. He only has the one X chromosome. OK. So that means. That because this is a recessive trait for his daughter. To have that recessive trait, her other X chromosome also has to have that recessive trait. Meaning, if the woman he mates with also can shoot webs from her wrist, meaning she is, you know, homozygous recessive, meaning both of her X chromosomes have that recessive trait, then um, there's a 100% chance. Let me see. Let me try one thing. I'm going to see if I can do a Punnett square to show you what I mean. So even if she has both and they're recessive, it's still a yes? Yeah, because this is the only way it would happen. Uh, because this is a recessive trait, oh, right? Okay. Let me let me try this and see if it works. Uh, oh, where is it at? Whiteboard. Start a new whiteboard. Let's hope this works. Viewer. Yep. 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 Okay. Continue. All right. I'm pulling up a whiteboard. Can you see it on your end? Not yet. Ah, all right. Let me try something else. Um, stop presenting. Where did the whiteboard go? There we go. Okay. Present entire screen. That would be this entire screen. And there we go. Come on. I've got that pulled up. Now I need to get the whiteboard pulled up. <laughs> there we go. Can you see the whiteboard now? Yep. Like, all right. So, oh, this is a ridiculous one. There we go. We're dealing with a man. So, XY. 
He does have that recessive trait. So I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, Q. doesn't matter what letter it is, but Q, big Q, and little Q are easier to, to distinguish. So the female, if she also had the ability, now she would have to be little Q, little Q, right? Because it's a recessive trait. So for her, she needs both of them to be recessive, right? Oh, right, because the dominant would take over. Right. So for the male, because it's sex linked, all you, all he needs is the one because, you know, the other chromosomes are Y. So it doesn't matter. 100% of his alleles are recessive, just like 100% of her alleles are recessive. But anyway, when you cross them and do a Punnett square, when that male goes through meiosis and produces sperm, half of his sperm are going to be the X chromosome with a little Q, and half of them will be a Y chromosome. And for her, no matter what, 100% of her um, her chromosomes are going to have that X, or 100% of her eggs, her gametes are going to have the X chromosome with the little Q. So here, okay. a little Q, little Q. Yeah, for, for both of those. Here we have a male who would also have it, right? Because, and then same thing here, X little Q, little Q, and then same thing, right? So that's why the female. If the female also has the ability to do it, then 100% chance that that you know their kids would be able to shoot spider webs from their wrist. Um, okay, so even the even the son. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, that then, makes sense. Just to show one more thing, if this was like an X big Q, right? So if she was not able to do it. Okay. Um, well, there'd still be a 50% chance. Yeah, you know, I won't go through the oh, whole thing. right. But if she and if she just didn't have it at all, like if she had if she was homozygous dominant, then there would be zero percent chance. And I think the reason I don't know about you, but usually when people get that question wrong, the reason they get it wrong is because there's a question on the study guide that's similar. And the correct answer for the one on the study guide is um, no, he can't basically. So your question, your answer would have been correct for the one on the study guide. I don't remember exactly what it said, but yeah. I think it said something about mutations. Maybe that the room yeah. meal. Yeah. So, okay. So that makes sense? Yes. Okay. I wrote down that part. And of course, I hate to say this, but if you're studying for the final, like I said, 50% of the questions are going to come from the first three exams. And those <laughs> I'm not going to change at all. So these are the few, this is one of the few times where you can just study the answer because I'm not going to change it. You know, okay. I mean, the, well, the study guides I always say, understand the concept because I will be changing the wordings. On this one, I'm saying, you know, you can actually just remember that that the answer is, if the woman he mates with can also shoot webs from her wrist, there's a 100 percent chance the daughter could do it. Okay. Yeah, I think on the study guides I asked you questions, but I'll look at that after. Okay. All right. Um, um, let's see. Transcribe this strand of DNA. So the big thing here is. The first word you need to pay attention to is we're saying transcribe, right? So that means we're looking at, we're making a molecule of RNA. So no matter what, anything that has a T in it is going to be the wrong answer. Oh, shoot. Okay. Let me go. Mine are all out of order here. Okay, wow. oh, can, can you see my screen though? Yeah. Okay. Good. Why? Because I was just thinking DNA. To the all right. So the first time you took the, or anybody took the exam, everybody gets partial credit, right? So for this, if you were to do the other strand of DNA, it would be CCA, GTT, uh, ATT, right? So the first time you took it, you would have gotten two thirds credit for that. But for the retake, no one got partial credit, just, just for the record. So transcribe, that was why, because it's RNA. So yeah. I needed the U. Exactly. Okay. But again, the first time you took it or anybody took it, it, had they guessed this, they would have gotten two points because I can at least they if they did, if they got that answer, I could tell they knew something. <laughs> they they knew something. They just, you know, they didn't focus on that transcribe word. But no, I did not because I I know I got the other one with the DNA right. and I wasn't paying attention to that. OK, so I circled that transcribe. So, ah. So that would have been uh, the last one then. Oh, no, yeah. wait. sorry. I'll bring it back up. Well, that, no, wait a minute. The thing is, too, they're all shuffled. So whatever you're seeing here. Oh, that's I'm glad. Oh, you're that's right. So that the proper answer is CCA. This one, G-U-U-A-U-U. -U -U. 
Okay, yeah, that's my last one. Okay. But, but again, I'm so glad you said that because I will point out, even though I am copying these questions verbatim and not changing the wording, these are all set to shuffle. So even though this is the correct answer, it might be the first one, it might be the last one, it might be anywhere in between because these will all be shuffled. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, because okay. the, okay, the U replaces the T. That's right. Okay. So okay. make sure, yeah, all right. Make sure you memorize the answer, not the position of the answer. <laughs> right. Transcribe RNA U replace T. That I knew. Okay, but I got that one wrong because I wasn't focused on the transcribe. Uh, right. Okay. Um, meiosis, not mitosis, and humans typically produce what? And you were so close. The letter, the number two, is what you got wrong. Because remember, we're talking about meiosis, so we. Oh, see, I and think again, I may have gotten that right on the first one, but I'm not sure. Oh, and that, this was a little bit tricky because. Um, I don't want to say I tried to be real tricky, but I tried to be a little bit tricky because it kind of sticks out, right? The rest of them are all detailed. This one just says four cells, but four cells is the correct answer. However, um, are those genetically identical yep. four cells? Yep. So you got partial credit because you got the genetically unique. Oh, excuse me. No, genetically, there would be four genetically unique. Oh, you need haploid cells. So, yeah, had this been the original exam, you would have had half credit because the only part you missed was the question, uh, the number two, because they are genetically unique and they are haploid. Okay. Yeah, um, I, think, I think I put four on the first one, but that's okay. I'll look at that later. Yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't even want to look at that one. That was just madness. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it is four cells. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of info there. And I was like, man, maybe I got it wrong because all the other stuff. But you were two thirds right. And like I said, in the first exam, that would have gotten you half credit. That's why that's, you know, I always go in and manually, I would do something like that. Because, again, I just want to re reward people who are kind of on the right track, which is a good time to mention, not for you, but for anybody else watching this video. If you had a borderline grade, keep in mind, you probably failed. But you got, you know, with the partial credit, that probably bumped you up to a passing grade. So anyway. Yeah, I was looking at the lab on that one and it said like the pre-lab questions and it, it said, you know, mitosis, mm -hmm. diploid cells and then haploid cells for the um, meiosis. And so I thought, well, maybe um, maybe I got it wrong because of that. So, OK, because it didn't say haploid. Right. So I thought, OK. And I knew it was four. Okay. So four genetically unique haploid cells. Okay. All right. All right. We'll scoot forward. Oh, yeah. Another thing for the sake of the video, I say this every once in a while. Since you're watching this on YouTube, there's a way, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a little gear that shows the settings and you can change the speed. So if you're watching this and it's a little bit slow, you can speed this up to be fat, like a little bit faster or a lot faster to save you some time and just pause it if you need to. But anyway. The next one. Oh, this is similar. In the human life cycle, um, let's just look at all the options to do a, a learning moment here for, okay. for anybody watching the video. Meiosis produces a haploid zygote. Um, meiosis produces a haploid zygote. Nope. Meiosis produces a haploid um, gamete, right? But not a zygote because the zygote is what happens after fertilization. So anybody who chose this would have gotten partial credit because meiosis does produce a haploid something. Um, the next option, a haploid zygote undergoes mitosis to produce an, an adult human. That is not true because a zygote is not haploid, but it does undergo mitosis to produce an adult human. You chose meiosis produces a diploid sperm and egg cell, and you probably would have had half credit in the original because meiosis does produce a sperm and egg cell, but the key word there is diploid. It should be haploid. Um, fertilization produces a diploid zygote, and that is the correct answer because, again, you put two haploid gametes together and you get a diploid zygote. And then this one, uh, actually, I won't even talk about where that came from. Yeah, well, why not? Um, so I have an app, and I assume other people do too, where if you take a picture of a question, it'll give you the answer. Okay. So what I do to make sure people aren't cheating is I take pictures of all my questions. And if, the, and if the wrong answer ever pops up, I include it in the choices. So generally speaking, I have a good indication of who might be cheating because if they kept getting those 
wrong answers that I got from my app, that's a good indication that they were using the same app and cheating. Oh. So, anyway. Any questions? Hey, people. <laughs> yeah, because I remember talking to you about zygote does not go with meiosis. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, because the zygote is that one cell that you have after fertilization, right? Okay. Which is interesting because in a sense, this is not that wrong of an answer because first the zygote turns into a fetus, which turns into a baby, which turns into a child, blah, blah, blah. But we don't even talk about all that stuff. And we don't even use the term fetus, especially using that spelling of it. That's just what came up with my app. So again. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. I was just like, I know that's not it because <laughs> that's not in our thing. Okay. So fertilization produces a diploid zygote. Okay. Yep. And that's mitosis. Meiosis produces the my uh, excuse me, for fertilization produces a diploid zygote. So Oh, okay. When the sperm and egg come together, that is that makes the zygote which is diploid. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. moving forward. Oh yeah, the extra credit one. And I'll go ahead and say this too, cuz I've said it I've said it so many times since the beginning. <laughs> it's the first exam. If you watch those exam reviews, I usually tell somebody, hey, there's going to be a really weird question at the end. And the answer is this. In this case, it was marked wrong, but only because this is a retake and there was no extra credit on the retake. But anyway, so that's it then for the exam three. Seriously? Yep. That's the only ones you missed. Oh. Now, did, did you want to go back and look at the ones you originally missed? Oh, Lord, no. I mean, we can. Don't go over this. I mean, you can go over the silly ones because I don't care. I'm not, I mean, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, it happens. But um, we can for the sake of other people, if you want. It's completely up to you. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's go to. Um, oh, I did want to ask you about the note card one because I wanted to make sure. And I think I put the same answer. It says, what would happen if a cell completed the cell cycle but not cyto? Um, kinesis and it would have two nuclei is that correct um yes yeah so because therefore it has more genetic material than it started with yes okay let's see okay. if i can find that so we can put it on the screen while we're talking about it oh yeah this one yeah what would happen if a cell completed the cell cycle but not cytokinesis um yeah, it would have more genetic material than it started with. Yeah, but to look at this, um, its chromosomes would be lined up in the middle of the cell. No, that would indicate that it got stuck in met metaphase. Uh, right. it, would not, it would not have completed anaphase. No, because like it says, it says right there, it completed uh, the cell cycle, every right. part of it other than cytokinesis. Um, obviously, it wouldn't have nuclei, one nuclei because the whole thing about mitosis is making two nuclei, so it would have two. And I just made that number up, that letter up. So basically, okay. yeah. So that's one of those that's one of those made up ones where you definitely wouldn't have gotten any credit. Um, you may have gotten partial credit. No, I don't think anyone got partial credit for that one. It's pretty straightforward. But anyway. Okay. I just want to double check on that one because I was like, oh, I think that's right. But okay. So that, all right. That's exam three. And if you want after, we can go over my original. That would be fine. Sorry, people. I was rushed and it's embarrassing, but whatever. I don't care. You sure? Right. Okay. I don't care. Um, let's see. Where's my exam two? Here it is. Okay. Exam, exam two. two. Let me pull that up. Not as bad, but not great. Yeah, unfortunately, you have a fortunately for you but unfortunate for the sake of uh making a video you got pretty good grades so <laughs> not a lot to talk about uh exam yeah, I, I felt nervous about this one but then um some of them i, I definitely got wrong so i want to make i want to see why more for for learning all right while, while i'm pulling it up oh once again beat the dead horse and say the exam is on Monday at 8 a.m. online. If you miss it, you will fail. Uh, okay, responses. Wake up, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, while I'm waiting on this to load up, if anybody is watching this, send me an email to say you watched it and uh, include a screenshot 
of me once I pull up once once you can see the exam that I'm about to pull up, take a screenshot, send that to me in an email, and you'll get a little bit of uh, points for your independent work. This is a reward for sitting through this because you don't have to. No one has to do this, though you should <laughs> help you get ready for the exam. All right, here we go. I've got it pulled up and share my screen. Okay, and you can see it now, right? Uh, no. Uh oh, that's weird. Coming up now. It's just oh, there. Okay. okay. So again, if you're watching the video, take a screenshot of that right now. Take a screenshot and uh, email that to me to let me know you watched it. Get, I don't know how many points you get yet. Let me think about it, but you'll get definitely some credit. Anyway, here we go. Exam two. Let's look at what you missed here. And of course, if there's any other ones you have questions about, because you know it is multiple choice, sometimes you might have no idea what the, what the question is asking and guess and get it correct. So if you have any of those, let me know too. But did I get that first one wrong? Well, we can scroll back up because you're already down here. Okay, I think this is the first one you missed, but let's take a look. Or yeah, like you said, this is high energy. Which produces high energy electrons that will be carried by NADPH. So the big thing to remember with photosynthesis is we're producing high energy electrons in one stage and then we're using them in the other, right? So the first one is when we're producing it's light reactions. So light reactions produces those high energy electrons. That's the whole, that's exactly what we're doing, right? We're using those photons to excite those electrons. So if you can remember, um, if you can remember that the first stage is all about I hate to say create energy because you're not right. Energy can't be created or destroyed. But in the, in the context of remember, um, studying for the exam and memorizing stuff, in a sense, the first one, the light reactions, you know, light's all about energy. It's all about creating energy. And then the Calvin cycle uses that energy. Oh, hang on. Those two questions are similar. That's okay. So the, I, okay. I probably got them backwards. Is the next one backwards? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And here's the exactly. kicker, since we're talking about it, not that it applies to you much, but um, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, there's quite a few questions on photosynthesis. And here, here's the thing. There was only two right answers. It was either light reactions or Calvin cycle. All this other garbage was just that garbage. So as long as you guess light reactions or Calvin cycle, you got at least half credit. So, so many people miss questions, miss this question. I don't know what they were like. They would say mitosis or, you know, whatever. So I was kind of disappointed in that, but yeah. So anyway, a lot of people got zero credit when they could have at least got partial credit if they remembered that the only thing in photosynthesis was light reactions and Calvin cycle. So photosynthesis blah, 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 produces high energy electrons hmm. through light reactions when they're carried. Right. And it uses the Calvin cycle. So I got those backwards. Yeah, the Calvin cycle uses them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, moving forward. And of course, anybody who's watching this video, as I'm scrolling through these correct answers, if I were you, you know, pause it, write it down, pause it, write it down. Cause that's exactly what you need to study. If I were you, I'd be studying these three exams, like flashcards or whatever, you know? Um, so anyway, beaker, there are three beakers. Each beaker has a value of 20. Because the balloon, each balloon is ten percent. Twenty percent seems compared. To, okay, I think what you did, and this is an easy mistake to make, especially considering there was a question like this on the study guide, and I flipped it. Are there two of these questions? Let me see. I'm not on my question, but I think there were two, and both of them threw me. So I don't know if I got the other one right or wrong. Beaker B. What's this one start with? Beaker A. Yeah. 10%, 20, oh, wait a minute, maybe this, solid, 20%, each beaker has a balloon, beaker A is 10%, beaker B is 20, and beaker C is 25, oh, okay, this is the right question, okay, isotonic, hypotonic, okay, so let me see, so, so you just got it backwards, most yeah, backwards. likely, 
most likely you were thinking about the study guide because the study guide asked you about the balloon. It's like, is the balloon hypertonic, isotonic, or uh, hypotonic? But this doesn't ask you about the balloon. It asks about the beaker compared to the balloon. So probably you just, you know, you studied like you should have. And the study guide asked about the balloon, not the beaker. And then the, this question asked about the beaker, not the balloon. Okay, so beaker C was hypotonic and beaker A was hyper. And then yep. because, let's see, let me see the solutions. Oh, okay, they were, okay. Okay. Good to go with that one? Yep. All right, so the next one, when you eat food, that energy is put to work to use in your cells. However, not all of it is used for work. What happens to the rest? It, it, oh, it's yeah. But um, you got half credit and anybody else who um, got it stored as ATP also got half credit because when you eat food, that energy is put to work and it is stored as ATP. But of course, the question is what happens to the rest of it, which is why the, the more correct answer is it's released as heat. The rest of them, like, it's definitely not stored as ADP. It's used in mitosis. I just threw that out there. It's used in meiosis. I just threw that out there, right? So as long as you you got partial credit because you got the, the only one that made sense. So, again, if you're watching this and you didn't get any credit for this question, it's because you guessed something way off. So, anyway, any questions about anything, that? One? Anything is um, energy that leaves as released as heat. Is that right? Or yeah, basically. Okay. And it's funny that we're talking about this now because, you know, we just finished in lecture talking about the trophic levels and how when you go from, you know, one level to the next, only 10% of that energy goes up to the next because a lot of it is lost and some of it is lost in the form of heat. And that also goes back to what we learned about when we talked about uh, thermodynamics. Anytime you change energy from one form to another, you lose, um, you lose some energy as heat. But anyway, any questions about that one? No, I know. I see what I did there. Okay. Well, you got that one correct. Um, we check the first one, and then can we go over the extra? Well, yeah, can we go over the extra credit? Because that it that looked wicked hard to me, and I felt bad for the people that needed to answer those questions. Right, yeah. Oh, so this one. All right. So I said when we were talking about respiration, I gave you the the, uh, the actual equation. I said you don't need to memorize these numbers. And you didn't because there was no regular questions about it. But for extra credit, I figured I'd throw it in there. So the real equation, like if you were to have the equation, it would say for every six molecules of oxygen, right? And every, let's see, um, write it down to make sure I'm saying this right. You have six molecules of oxygen plus one molecule of glucose, right? So C6H12O6 gives you six molecules of water, uh, six molecules of carbon dioxide. And then the, the number you did need to know was, you know, you needed to know for just the rate, the respiration, the way we taught it, there was about 32 ATP made, right? But again, the way it gets tricky, and this is why it's an extra credit question is, for every six molecules of oxygen, you get about 32 ATP. So if we double it, so if you have about 12 molecules of oxygen, then you're going to double the 32 and you end up with 64. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then okay. for this one, the photosynthesis electrons get energized and that energy in those electrons are put to use regarding the molecule that ultimately provides those electrons. How many does it give up at a time? So I mentioned that in the lecture and I said, you don't need to know this and you didn't because again, it's extra credit, but when water gives up those electrons, remember I, I pointed out that it gives up two at a time. So even though I keep saying the electron does this, the electron does that, technically it's two electrons. And if you remember the, like the pictures of NADPH and NADH and FADH2, they all, those pictures all had like two little holes in them because each one of them carried two electrons. So again, yeah. I didn't expect anybody to know that, but I thought anybody who did know that should definitely get extra credit for it. Uh, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, and this one. <laughs> I was like, um... I'm just not even going to answer that. I'm, I'm done. I'm oh, to turn it in. <laughs> and this one was the question basically like we were just talking about. So the average human's temperature is 98.6 degrees. Simply put, where does this heat come from? It's the heat that's lost, you know, when we convert the energy from one form to another. So like we said earlier, 34% of the energy is put to use. The rest of it's lost as heat. But that's where it's lost as heat, right? That's where we get our warmth from. 
Um, assume you had an issue with the pH inside your mitochondria was equal to the pH of the space between the layers of my mitochondria. You wouldn't be able to make ATP. Why? So when you think about um, the electron transport chain, what we're doing is as those electrons go down, right? They're, they're releasing the energy. What we're doing is we're pumping it. We're pumping those hydrogen ions against the concentration gradient because then they diffuse back down the concentration gradient. But if there is no concentration gradient, right? If the hydrogen is equal on both sides, then the the hydrogen ions they're just not going to move. Therefore, that's why you won't be able to produce an ATP, right? The, the because the hydrogen ions aren't moving. Because there's a million ways you could describe that, but yeah, that's that's the important thing there. Because there is no concentration difference, those those hydrogen ions will not diffuse. Therefore, you know, there's nothing to turn that ATP synthase and make the ATP. Okay. Okay. I don't think anyone got that one right. I don't remember. Anyways, check the very first one. I think you got the first one right. Yeah, there's nothing up here you missed. Oh, okay. But did you want me to look at it anyway? Is that one of those that maybe you guessed it and happened to get it right? Or... Let me see. Okay. Oh, no, that was one of those. That first one I said, I've mentioned that a few times in the lecture. I was like, someone's going to miss this, and it's going to make me sad. And oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I did miss it, and it did make me sad because it's the most basic of the questions. Respiration uses glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and water. I was pretty sad about that one, but it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for exam two. Did you have any other questions from exam two? No. Uh-uh. Nope. Um, if you want to look at exam one and see if there's anything on there. Yeah, might as well. And then I'm going to check my email because I know I asked you a question about Chapter study guide 19, and maybe we can clarify that. Let me just look. All right, while I'm pulling it up and it is taking forever, again, the, like I said, if you those people send me the screenshot, they'll get some independent work points. I don't know how many yet, but in that screenshot, if you also use the keyword box, so send me. Send me that picture and also send me the word box. So if you send me the picture and use the word box, then you'll get a little bit more. Um, anyway, let me look. Yeah, it says you got perfect score, but let me make sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, no, nothing to cover there. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to drag my... Um, Thing out, but we can go to my chapter 19 study guide if you want. Okay, chapter, uh, 19. chapter 19 study guide. Right. You did me, you did give me a response, but I, I still i am confused about it, so that would help. All right, it's loading. Okay, responses, question, individual. Come on. There we go. Present the screen. And you just let me know when you can see it. it should be soon. Um, it was 18. Uh, okay, so 14th was, I thought the correct answer would have been the growth rate of zero after I inserted it incorrectly. All right, yeah. yeah. And you got like uh, your answer was a correct answer, just not the most correct. Because technically, when the growth rate goes to zero, it is decreasing, right? So you're right, it does decrease. Um, but yeah, the, the more correct answer is the growth rate is zero. So when when a, when a population hits carrying capacity, you know, according to the logistic growth model, anyway, the growth rate is zero. And for the exam, that's what you need to know. But of course, because I'm not trying to teach you an exam, I'm trying to teach you biology, it is worth noting that it doesn't usually go exactly like that, right? It usually fluctuates up and down above and below um, zero growth rate. But anyway, yeah, so any questions about number 14? No. All right. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. An unexpected freeze. That, okay. So. Yeah. Okay. This one. Yeah. A freeze is just a uh, density independent, right? Because it's just going to kill everything. 
You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. Unlike a disease, right? The more crowded it is, the quicker a disease spreads. For example, that would be density dependent, right? Because the, again, the more crowded it is, the more the easier the disease would spread. Therefore, the deadlier it would be. That would be density dependent. Same thing with like starvation, right? The 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 more that would be density dependent because the the more population you have in that area, the less the less food you have. So you know, starvation would matter. But a freeze would kill the chipmunks regardless, you know, like, let's say well, chipmunks is probably a bad option just to make it even easier to think about. Imagine this was, uh, I don't know, iguanas, right? Something that just couldn't survive a freeze. So if a freeze hit Florida, you know, it would kill 100% of the iguanas in Miami. And that doesn't matter if there's a hundred iguanas in Miami, or if there's a thousand iguanas in Miami, all of them are going to die from that freeze. Right. It doesn't matter how densely they're they're packed in there together. It's just a freeze is going to it has nothing to do with the population density. OK. OK. And then, so it's because it's a freeze. Right. So anything like or again, like uh, trying to think of other examples, like a nuclear bomb. Right. And let's say there's a nuclear bomb that has a one mile kill radius, like anything within one mile, of that radius is definitely going to be vaporized. Right. So. If a nuclear bomb hits a city, it's going to kill everything within one, one mile, right? Regardless if there's five people in that one mile or a million people in that one mile, it's just going to kill everything there. It doesn't matter, right? Okay. It doesn't matter how many people are in there. So yeah. that would be density independent? Yeah. Uh, just like a freeze would be density independent, a nuclear bomb would be density independent, a fire, right? A forest fire is just going to kill all the trees doesn't matter well oh that one's i don't want to use that one might as well talk about it sure i won't use forest fire because you could argue that you know the closer those trees are together the quicker the fire will spread so and in a sense a forest fire is almost like a disease right the closer they are together the quicker and, and more intense the fire is so I, I won't use that one on the exam what would be an example of density dependent then since i'm not actually looking at my notes and stuff I think the biggest ones would be um, disease and starvation or um, or to bring it in to talk about the keystone species thing that we mentioned. Um, a lack of hiding places. Right. So we talked about how the otter ate those sea and enemy, uh, the sea urchins, and they kept the sea urchin population under control. And when the, the otter was gone, then the sea urchin population was out of control and it ate all the kelp. And because of that, the fish species started to die because they were running out of places to live, right? So um, let me see how would I word that for a question. Just resources. Anything that, yeah, for density dependent, it, it's either like disease or resources. Anytime you're competing for a resource, obviously the more dense the population is, the more effective, it, you know, the more it, it does matter. Okay, so if you were to say something happened and it wiped out all of the um, agricultural um, everything like farms and cattle and everything, then that might be density dependent because it would cause starvation. Exactly. Yeah. The more people you have, the quicker you'll starve. Right. So, but uh, it'll be more straightforward. Okay. I'll try to make sure the question is not ambiguous. And I was, I was, I did that to this too. I was thinking that wasn't ambiguous. Like it's just, a, if it's going to kill a population, it's going to kill the whole population, regardless if there's five of them or 5,000, it's just the, the, the freeze is going to kill the whole population. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. I think that might've been it on that one. I think so too. Yep. That was it. And I have not done 20 yet. Um, but we can do exam three real quick if you want the first one, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> sure, that'd be a good, a good learning experience. Here we go. Yes. And if people want to know, set timers, because I set my timer too close to the end of the exam and therefore I had to rush through. No, oh, good call. Yeah. Like, you know, set halfway mark. And, or uh, also a good time to remind everybody, if you don't want to be timed, contact me now, <laughs> like contact me and we can find a time to meet online. As long as I can see you and see your screen and hear you and know that you're not using an open book or anything like that, then I don't care how long it takes you to take the exam. 
Anyway, let's see. So the exam on Monday is at home online, just exactly. like all the other ones. Yep. Right. Not changing it up at all. I'm going to keep it consistent. And if an emergency happens, contact you. Yeah, I will be online. You know, like you and I are online right now. I will be online. No one else needs to be, but I'm here if you have questions or if you have an issue. All right. Okay. Like when I emailed you about the wording or that letter on the exactly. DNA. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Which also is a good reason. And again, you don't have to, but it might be helpful that when you're taking the exam to go ahead and get online, just stay, keep your camera off, stay on mute. Cause that would have saved you time. Instead of emailing me, you could have just like unmuted yourself and said, Hey, number blah, blah, blah. Then I could have told you, you know, addressed it and everybody else who was online could have heard it. But okay. If I can't do that, if I, should I take a picture, a screen, like a, ah, just do a screenshot. Yes. If you have any issues, uh, the more evidence, the better. Screenshots, screen recordings, anything you can get. Okay. Instead of me just taking your word for it, like, oh, my computer crashed at whatever o'clock. Like, if your computer has crashed, you know, I just need some, like, take start taking a video, you know, show your watch that shows what time it is, show the video of you, like, booting your computer back up and whatever. More evidence, the better. All right. So I'm pulling up your original here. <laughs> Tab. Yep. Even your original though was still better than a lot of the other ones. All right. Let me know when you can see it. I can see it. All right. Oh Lordy, yeah. When you came up with these weird breeds. All right. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> so okay, uh, we have a purebred something. Doesn't matter what, with red eyes, and it's crossed with a purebred something with blue eyes. Their offspring are all blue, right? They all have blue eyes. Wait, their offspring are blue. Oh, shoot, sorry. 25% of their offspring are blue, 25% are red, and then 50% are purple. So the key thing here is, and again, this is sort of like the question from the study guide. I just changed what we're talking about. I made up some word for what we're talking about. But what happens here is you mix something red with something blue, and the key here, don't even need to worry about the numbers. The key here is you ended up with something purple. So what happens when you, if you mix red and blue, you get purple. Therefore, if you're mixing phenotypes, that means it's incompletely dominant. Okay. So the rest of them. Oh, and sadly, sadly, you were, you got that one completely wrong. That's one of those where I just threw in a bunch of words that didn't make sense. The, F, the offspring of the F2 generation of independent variation. I just threw, just threw in a bunch of words from from – from those three uh, chapters, but so, yeah. Yeah. I just remember seeing F2 generation and I just, I didn't know the answer and I just thought, well, better to right. take a chance. Yeah. So yeah, the correct answer is incompletely dominant. And again, the thing to focus on there is we went, we crossed red and blue and then the, the mixture of those things is um, incomplete. Of course, if I said we crossed red and blue and then they were, red with blue spots or blue with red spots, that would be um, co-dominant. But because they mixed, it's incomplete dominance. Okay. Um, oh, so the next one down is going to be co-dominant because yeah. it's... And anybody who guessed for this one, anybody who guessed incomplete dominant um, got partial credit. Um, purple allele is dominant to the red allele. I don't remember if people got partial credit for that or not, because clearly that's not the case. Um Anyway, oh yeah, and then yeah, whatever. All right, next one. A new species of starfish is discovered on a newly discovered island in the South Pacific. A purebred blue starfish is crossed with a purebred yellow starfish. Some of the offspring are blue with yellow spots, so you're right, it is co-dominant. Okay, I so, think I was just with the wording, incompletely dominant. Yeah. Not dominant, it's so, but yeah, okay. And look, and you got partial credit for that one because again, that's e those are easy to mix up. So remember, if you blend the two phenotypes, that's incomplete dominance. And if you have, and if you have both of them separately, both of the phenotypes separately, in this case, blue with yellow spots, that would be a uh, incomplete dominance. And of course, and I'm not going to change it, but if I were to change it, and again, I'm not going to, but if this were to say some of the offspring were green, then the answer would be co-dominant. Excuse me, good grief. Let me start over to make sure this isn't confusing because I said the wrong thing. I was reading the wrong answer. Oh. 
Yellow starfish mixed with a blue starfish. If they're blue with yellow spots, that is co-dominance. Because when you have both phenotypes, that is co-dominance. But again, if this were to say blue starfish, yellow starfish, some of them are green, then it would be incompletely dominant because then you're blending the phenotypes. Okay. Okay. All right. The law of segregation basically states what? Um, and the correct answer is only one allele segregates into each gamete. Okay. I've had two. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think I think everybody got partial credit unless you guess this one completely random thing that I made up, which is a diploid organism passes a, a randomly selected synthase. I just made up some words for those last three. And uh, anybody who guessed that got zero credit. I'm pretty sure anybody who guessed the other ones may have gotten half credit. But anyway, any questions about that one? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, this one was this one was basically in the study guide. I just reworded it. It doesn't matter what it is, a bulldog and a shih tzu. That was just a joke from Dumb and Dumber. Because you, if you, if you oh. <laughs> then you get a bullshit. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah. The, basically, the question is really asking, if you cross things, what is the, on the cross that will give you a heterozygous offspring? And the answer is always, you know, heterozygous, do homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive are the only things that will give you a heterozygous um, offspring. And of course, if you had time, which you know you were timed, so you didn't. But if you you could just do a Punnett square for each of these until you find the correct answer. Okay. All right. What is the key to recognizing a trait whose expression is determined by the effects of two or more genes? Is nothing much to say other than like in the lecture I said the question is going to say basically. Um, where is it at? Yeah. If you were to graph the phenotypes, it would be a bell curve, right? So like height is a great example of polygenic inheritance. There's not one gene for height. There's a bunch of stuff. So, you know, that's why there's very few short people, more and more and more and more and more medium sized people, and then very few tall people. And yeah, that, that was in the book when I went back through the bell and, curve. That and, exact. Yeah. And sadly, you chose my, my nonsense one. Because, <laughs> you know, had Polyotropy probably would have may have gotten partial credit. I don't remember which ones would have got partial credit, but yeah, that's the one that I just made up. Um, assume the ability to shoot spider webs. Wait, we already talked about this one. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, I got that one wrong on the first one. Okay. The question is not about prokaryotes. Uh, there's a process mRNA goes through called splicing. In this process, things are removed. Yeah, this one was a rush through, and I was like, remove, exit, we'll just go with exit. So right. I went exons. But. And it is confusing. That used to confuse me as a younger student. But just to help anybody remember, remember, the exons are the parts that are expressed, meaning those are the parts that actually get translated and turned into protein. The introns are just the stuff in between. So expressed and in between. And you got partial credit. Anybody who guessed any of this other garbage would have gotten zero credit. But at least you... You know, there was two real options, introns and exons, and you at least got one of the one of those that made sense. We already talked about the transcribe one. Yeah. Again, see, so you got partial credit because you were on the right track. You just didn't get the RNA instead of the DNA. Uh, what happens in transcription? Oh, yeah, that's my. <laughs> oh, that was, that was, oh right. <laughs> that was my. Oh, I have to because I was like, I got to submit this. And it was like, no, you have to answer this question. And I was like, OK. And I just, you know, touch screen. I just picked something. And then I went to submit it again. And it was like, no, you have to answer this. And I was like, touch screen. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. OK, well, that explains <laughs> that because, yeah, those are just, you know, just words that shouldn't be there. And so anybody who got partial credit would have had. Uh, well, first of all, the correct answer is. In reverse order, if we're talking about transcription, the reverse order would be termination, elongation, initiation. Um, so if if somebody guessed, you know, any of these two, at least at least those include the words that should be there. Or and I'm sorry, that one. Now that is the correct answer. Which one did I give partial credit for? Maybe just that one, even though it has continuation, which isn't one of them. But anyway, yeah. So that's the correct answer: termination, elongation, initiation. Um, which enzyme did we discuss being used? This is a sort of a tricky one. I had to really look for that one. See, that that's what makes it tricky. The answer is just uh, 
Oh, wait, sorry. S phase. So an S phase of interphase, we're making DNA, right? That's what we're duplicating the DNA. So the answer is just DNA polymerase. How the, the thing that makes us tricky is the helicase is used, but we never, I never mentioned that word once. I don't think it's in your textbook because, uh, because it's a 100 level course. But anyway, so yeah, I don't remember. DNA polymerase is the correct answer. Anybody who guessed RNA polymerase at least got half credit. I knew it had to be an ace. Yeah, good call. <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely anybody who guessed cohesions is definitely, I think that was a word that I made up. But anyway, what would a mutation that results in, in an insertion of a premature stop codon do? I'm not asking what it was called. I'm asking what it would do. All right, so you have a premature stop codon. So first of all, what's this? What's a stop codon do? A stop codon says stop translating, right? So stop making this polypeptide. Stop making this protein. So that's why the correct answer is it would result in a shorter strand of amino acids okay. because that's what the, the stop codon says. All right, we're done. We're no longer adding amino acids to this polypeptide. We're done. So that's why that's the correct answer. Um, okay. I thought it was RNA because that's that process. Correct? Right. And that's why you got partial credit because stop codon sounds very similar to or similar in concept to a terminator. So if the question said, what happens if there is a premature terminator, then your answer would be correct because termination is what ends um, transcription and transcription is when we make a strand of RNA. Okay. So that's why you got partial credit. Anybody who guessed that got partial credit. Anybody who guessed um, shorter strain of DNA or definitely a shorter strain of monosaccharides or reverse mitosis, that's, I completely made that up. Um, those would have been zero credit. Um, if you could see your DNA directly after S phase of interphase, you would find what? So this is the question about like, you know, when you go through S phase of interphase and you're producing a new DNA, if you can remember that picture, you get, well, you got it right on the second exam, but, um, yeah, it splits and then it's like, um, creating a new one. Yeah. So, yeah, it does split. So that you have that one original split strand and it splits. So what you end up with is two strands or two new DNA molecules, one of which each has uh, one old strand and one new strand. And if that's confusing you, I don't even want to try to verbally explain it. It's better to go back and look at your book and look at the picture. The picture it makes it makes it perfect sense. Because if I verbally explain it, it might actually make it worse, make it more. <laughs> That's what I looked at the picture in the book with, for that one. And I was like, oh. And, and this is one of those, you know, this is one of those questions where, you know, so many people got at least partial credit. Because as long as you didn't guess viruses, you got partial credit. So, again, if you f did very poorly on this exam, is a very, is a, and you like barely passed, there's probably in all actuality you failed. Because there's a lot of questions like this where, Unless you got the one really wrong one, you at least got partial credit. Um, a nuclear bomb exploded. You survived but got nailed with some radiation, which causes a mutation. The mutation substituted an A for a C. None of that really matters because here's the important part. The mutation was such that the codon still codes for the same amino acid, which makes that a silent mutation. right? So, yeah, you may have changed a number or, excuse me, changed a letter in the codon, but the codon still says, bring me, you know, whichever amino acid. Therefore, that is a silent mutation. Okay. But I like, though, and you got partial credit. Yeah. And that was one of those where you get partial credit because obviously, yes. Um, well, no. It didn't insert it. I guess you could argue that if you took out, you removed a, removed an A and put in a C or whatever. But, yeah. So the best answer is, the real answer is silent. The second best answer would be... Well, it's not even on there, but it would be substitution. But anyway, as long as you didn't guess, I think some mutations were induced, then uh, you got partial credit. In blank, okay, this one you got partial credit. A lot of people miss this one. I said it in the in the uh, lecture. I was like, there's going to be two questions like this, one of which is going to ask you to put them in order, and the other one's going to ask you to uh, – Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people miss that one. But at least as long as you guess the one where it's in order, you got – partial credit but yeah in blank sister chromatids separate so that's anaphase um, they're lined up in the middle and metaphase um, they coil up in prophase and in telophase a nuclear um, nuclear envelope forms so yeah the correct answer is anaphase metaphase telophase okay 
And if I remember correctly, I think I may have even get partial credit for anything that had the phases in it, as long as it wasn't this or this. And of course, this this is one of those where I used my app and I took a picture of the question and I don't know why, but BIs that that came up, so I included it. Some people did guess it, but hmm. anyway, uh, genetic variation is accomplished by all the following. Uh, yeah, so independent assortment does. Uh, result in genetic variation so it is crossing over both of those things happen um in the first meiosis so uh that's why all those are the correct answer and that's why prophase two is incorrect right is it anything in meiosis two yeah basically yeah anything in meiosis two does not um contribute to genetic variation that's essentially meiosis two as far as we're concerned it's essentially the same as mitosis i mean there are some differences but yeah okay and we already talked about that one. And we already talked about that one. Homologous chromosomes carry the uh, carry genes controlling the same inherited characteristics. So if they carried the same versions of all genes, that would be like their homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. So at least you were on the right track, which is why you got partial credit. Okay. And I think that's it. Extra credit. We already talked about that. Yeah, so that's it. Okay. So then I guess you just want to, you're going to do the chapter 20 study guide and just let me know if you have any questions then, right? Yeah, I'll just email you like I had. All right. Um, and again, just so I have a paper trail and as a reminder, if you can email me and tell me, remind me that we discussed exams one, two, and three, that way I can go in and give you a 10% boost to all three of those grades. Okay. All right. Well, have a good day and good luck on Monday. And like I said, I'll, you know, I'll, hopefully I can be available over the weekend. I'll try my best. So if something from chapter 20 really throws you off, hopefully I can be there to help you. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.